between the Shaquille O'Neal and Magic Johnson jerseys in the rafters of Crypto.com Arena, there's a purple and gold top with the Los Angeles Lakers number 44 embroidered on the back that Jerry West wore throughout his 14-year stint with the team. However, it appears that his long-term relationship with the Lakers has come to an abrupt end. Stick around to find out everything you'd need to know, along with other interesting news. First up, Jerry West lifetime Lakers tickets taken away? Why? Jerry West's feud with the Los Angeles Lakers, the team for which he was a player and an executive, continues. West claimed to The Athletic that the team canceled the lifelong season tickets that he claims former owner Dr. Jerry Buss, who died in 2013, promised him and didn't even bother to call him about it. West explained, it was a cold phone text to my wife. No one had the audacity to call me, but that's because they're so petty, okay? And don't get me wrong, I adore the Lakers. It makes me happy to watch them succeed. It's a fantastic basketball court. Everything that transpired while I was there makes me proud. I'm proud of everything that happened while I wasn't there. However, there are times when you feel rejected, as if you're a piece of trash. There are a couple of folks over there, not Jeannie, Buss, Jerry's daughter and current Lakers owner, but there are a handful of people over there that, uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't think so. Jeannie and I have always had a fantastic relationship, or so I thought. Following this statement, West did not sound interested in any form of reconciliation. Jerry West was a star player in his time. He won an NBA championship with the Lakers and was a member of 14 all-star teams as a player. With him in charge of the front office, the Lakers won six titles. West was a part of the Showtime Lakers of the 1980s, and he orchestrated the Kobe Bryant deal, as well as the signings of Shaquille O'Neal and Coach Phil Jackson that propelled the organization to a three-peat in the early 2000s. A pretty big influence on elite professional basketball, as you can see. However, there has been tension between West and the Lakers management. One of the first issues, according to Stephen A. Smith in 2019, was West's belief that Jerry Buss had broken a handshake agreement for a $1 million payment if he could land O'Neal. While the incentive was eventually paid out, Smith claims that West's dissatisfaction with Buss' tardiness motivated him to compete against the Lakers as an executive with the Grizzlies, Warriors, and Clippers. More recently, West, who is now a consultant with the Clippers, attempted to woo then-free agent Kawhi Leonard away from the Lakers, whom he referred to as a <clears throat> show. It's clear there is a lot of remaining tension among the two parties, and this issue will most likely not be resolved anytime soon. This isn't that surprising, as we see these kinds of small feuds play out all over professional sport. Just unfortunate he lost his lifetime tickets. Simmons slides into Shaq's DMs, and he was really mad. Here's why. Shaquille O'Neal's DMs were slid into by Ben Simmons. Yes, you heard that correctly. Shaq alleged on a recent episode of his big podcast that O'Neal was enraged by his previous statements, labeling him a crybaby, and messaging him on Twitter. O'Neal told co-hosts Nichelle Turner and Spice Adams he sort of came in my DM and said some things, and I said some things back. When Turner inquired what the former LSU stars said, O'Neal repeatedly stated, I don't, I can't do that, before mentioning Simmons was upset in the messages. O'Neal was referring to his rant on TNT's Inside the NBA last Thursday regarding Simmons. Last week, the Lakers great referred to Simmons as a crybaby, saying he doesn't respect him and refusing to name the Australian All-Star. Shaq was comparing Simmons to Embiid, who has stepped up in Simmons' absence in Philadelphia. Ben has yet to feature in a game this season after requesting a trade during a summer holdout with the organization in the offseason. He later skipped training camp, telling the Sixers that he wasn't mentally prepared to play. The Sixers, who are 31 and 20, are doing more than surviving without Simmons. Thanks to Embiid and the ever-improving play of Tyrese Maxey, Simmons' replacement at the point, Philadelphia entered Friday in third place in the Eastern Conference, a game and a half behind the first-place Bulls. In a 106-103 loss to the Wizards on Wednesday, the Cameroonian center had a double-double, 27 points, 14 rebounds, and is averaging a career-high 29.1 points, 10.8 rebounds, and 4.4 assists. After the Sixers were defeated in the playoffs by the Hawks in seven games in June, Simmons' schism with the franchise began. Simmons is said to be watching every Sixers game and working out privately at the team's practice facility in New Jersey, according to ESPN. Despite rumors that he has lost a total of $26 million in fines so far this season and is losing $500,000 for every game he misses, he apparently attends team shoot-arounds and film sessions to avoid getting punished. It will be interesting to see what happens this trading season, which the NBA is currently in. Will Simmons
weapons be traded and moved around? We will just have to wait and see at this point. During the height of his free throw struggles, O'Neal went through something similar. People were tough on him, but as the Hall of Famer said, O'Neal kept missing free throws, leaving him nothing with which to retaliate against his detractors. The same can be said for Simmons, who has a real reason to be chastised for his performance and how he is managing the matter. However, there's more to it than meets the eye, as evidenced by O'Neal's change of heart. Shaq's words clearly struck Ben differently in the midst of a barrage of abuse directed at Simmons, and he felt compelled to respond. Whatever he said to O'Neal provided a distinct perspective on the situation, which was enough to sway Shaq to his side. Why doesn't he do it in front of everyone? We may never know. Now in trade news, Clippers receive Norman Powell, Robert Covington from Trailblazers. The NBA trade deadline for 2022 isn't until about a week from now, but the Los Angeles Clippers and Portland Trailblazers aren't waiting. The two teams finally reached a mutual agreement on a five-player pact. The NBA trade deadline for 2022 is planned for Thursday, February 10th, and we're already in the middle of it. The Los Angeles Clippers have acquired Norman Powell and Robert Covington from the Portland Trailblazers in exchange for Eric Bledsoe, Justice Winslow, Keon Johnson, and a 2025 second-round selection, according to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski via Detroit. There is no question or doubt in anyone's mind that the Clippers are the clear winners in this deal. Head coach Ty Louie informed reporters after the Clippers' win against the Los Angeles Lakers on Thursday night that Kawhi Leonard will probably not return from his ruptured ACL this season. The Clippers are in desperate need of help, especially with Paul George out indefinitely due to an elbow injury. Powell, who is averaging 18.7 points per game and shooting 40.6% from three-point range this season, will provide a huge offensive lift. While Leonard and George are out, he can handle some of the offensive creation duties, and when or if they return, he can transition to more of a floor spacer role. He's making 43.8% of his catch-and-shoot threes this season. Meanwhile, Covington is enjoying one of his most underwhelming seasons, scoring 7.6 points and 5.4 rebounds per game. He's a good addition as a defensive winger, though. He's averaging 1.5 steals and 1.3 blocks per game, and he can guard numerous spots, so he's a good insurance policy in case Nick Batum gets hurt again. The Blazers, on the other hand, are certainly looking to the future with this acquisition. With Damian Lillard sidelined for the season due to an abdominal injury and the club in 10th place in the Western Conference at 21-31, and 31, this is a chance for them to regroup. It's clear that this transaction is primarily about the Trailblazers cutting salary and avoiding the luxury tax. However, they just dealt two of their significant trade pieces for a second-round pick and the players they just obtained. It's unclear what kind of future Bledsoe and Winslow will have in Portland, but rookie first-round pick Keon Johnson is an intriguing acquisition as a high-flying winger with some long-term upside. Furthermore, Bledsoe's four-year $70 million agreement with the Milwaukee Bucks, which he signed in 2019, will expire after this season. His contract is worth $19.4 million in the final year, but only $3.9 million is guaranteed, making him a possible buyout candidate for the Blazers to save even more money. And there you have it, everything you need to know about Jerry West and why his lifetime Lakers tickets were quickly revoked. Additionally, we also touched on Ben Simmons getting mad at Shaq in the DMs and some interesting trade news you need to know about. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching.